five, four, three, two. two. Oh, God damn it. This one. is bad. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Hello. Um, you guys, by which I mean, hello, listeners, by which I mean, hello, uh, I don't even know where I'm going with this. Welcome to this wow. podcast. <laughs> start right off with a transition. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you said that I had to top your kid shitting everywhere thing from last week. So uh-huh. I decided to do the complete opposite and give the worst possible intro that's ever happened. That was pretty so good. So this is, this is our podcast. Don't get your hopes up. Mm-hmm. As evidenced by how you should not have gotten your hopes up. Last I week. am Yeah, last week. I am Josh Allen, a.k.a. Lore. This is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Hello. Hi. Uh, yeah, we were we were a bit busy last week. You were you were down in, in my neck of the woods. I was. Yeah. I brought my microphone and my stand and my shock absorbers and everything. Because I was like, oh, yeah, maybe we're recording Don't Get Your Hopes so we get that down there. And what did we end up doing? Drinking. Drinking. <laughs> <laughs> I Just feel like we made the right choice. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> yeah. If we'd known that was the alternative, like we would have just the whole show would have just been like, we should wrap this up so we can go drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Like basically Towley hit me up and he was like, Hey, we're going to uh this brewery that's nearby. Do you wanna come? And I was like, Oh yeah, sure, cool. Is it cool if Mike B comes too? And he was like no, both of you can come. And I was like, okay, sweet. This It's occurring to me that I'm using very poor phrasing through the entire story here. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, no, we went, to, we went to this place and we hung out and Olivia was there and mm-hmm. uh, Lindsay was there. Yep. And Tally and Lula were there and a couple mm-hmm. other people were there. It was cool. It was cool. It was. It was a... Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a it was a micro brewery. Brewery. Mm. Brewery. It, it's spelt very um It's literally called the brewery. Yeah, the brewery. Uh and yeah, it was nice. I you know, we 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 came down that was what Friday night? Yeah, we came down for yeah. VidCon. And uh we'll get to that in a second. Uh and so it was just like, you know, looking to kill some time on a Friday night, and that was the absolute best thing ever. It was uh, as people on the internet has pointed out, it was basically a legendary reunion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I should have gotten Shaftnit to come out, too. Oh, man. He, like, I probably could have, because he works at Blizzard now. Yeah, yeah. Oh. What a jerk! Why didn't you invite him? I honestly just didn't even think of it. Oh. Uh... That's cool. So we, sorry, we, we already took up. <laughs> <laughs> we already took up a whole two tables. We made we like did. another crowd just sit there on like stools in a circle and little power. Yeah, it, it was cool. They had beer, so it was, they had beer. Yeah, the okay. the the beer selection was it was really good. Uh, yeah. because they have like probably like what twenty five different beers. Oh, uh, at least down yeah. one side of of the sheet. And uh, if you ever went and ordered sushi, it's kind of the same thing. You basically pencil in what you yeah. want <laughs> and then take it to them and they give you uh, a flight, uh, very similar to like a, a flight of wine. When you go wine tasting, you know, yep. here's an X number of things. And so you get these five, was it five? I think it was five beers. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're pretty decent little pours, you know. Uh, I would say like, what, four ounce or something like that? Four, yeah, four to six ounce? It seemed like you were getting, like with the whole flight, you were getting about a pint. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and it was like it ranged from that one with a strawberry like kick to it or something or cherry kick. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, they had a lot of they have a lot of sours. Yeah, um, all the way to the one that tastes like you're biting into like a, like a like a hoagie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they really smoky ones. They had uh, the one they have one called Liter of Cola. Which yeah. it tastes like, like like it tastes like flat soda, yeah, flat cola. Um, but so we went there and there's like this trash tr- trash truck. It, it was a it, it was, was it's called the trash truck or something. Yeah, like that. the garbage yeah. truck. It was, it was um, a food truck. Food truck, yeah, food truck, and it was themed after trash or something. Yeah, because that's what I'm hungry for. Oh all the time. yeah. 
it's basically like all fried food hmm. uh, in various forms. Um, there was the pizza egg roll. Yeah. Uh, that was delicious. Uh, it's like deep <laughs> fried three times over. It seriously, it's like it gave me the impression of a broke college student found a truck and decided I'm going to use what's left in my fridge <laughs> <laughs> to start a food truck. <laughs> yeah yeah it was like exactly pizza egg rolls and there was like there was that thing that towley got which is like called the trash plate or something which was just like a hamburger patty and some macaroni salad and some like tater tots or something all like thrown together in this <laughs> thing like oh right yeah yeah i forgot what it was it was yeah it was straight up a hamburger patty on top of all that shit you just said like yeah yeah like not even <laughs> not even in anything resembling like something that wouldn't be a pain in the ass to eat. It was just like, here, we found this. <laughs> <laughs> How would you like to have some? Uh, but that was really good. So we ate that. Yeah. And uh, drank a lot. And then mm. we ordered a Chicago deep dish pizza. Mm. Uh, and that was, that was Olivia's first time. Uh, yeah. With uh, Chicago deep dish pizza. Um, it was really good. Uh, yeah, and then what was the other thing that we got? There was something else that we got, like on top of everything else, man. It was oh cannolis. That's right. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh god. Yeah, I was like, there was something sweet. What was it? Yeah, it was cannolis. I must have taken like half a bottle of Pepsi or something that night, man. <laughs> it was just, it was just acid on acid on acid. I was gonna yeah. die. Yeah, I was. He could have rolled me out of there by the end of that because I, <laughs> I, I had two pieces of the Chicago deep dish pizza. Whoa. Yeah, and that was it was a it was a legit Chicago deep dish also, which means it was like it had to have been like four inches tall, something like that. <laughs> it's like a wedding cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was meat cake. <laughs> Uh, they did give us like five of those little stand things. That's how many it took to yeah. hold it down. Those little yeah, exactly. pins or whatever they're called. The little table things. Uh, so I yeah, that was. They looked like little tables. That was a really good night. That was a really was a good, good night. night. That was fun. Um, so that's why we didn't do the podcast last week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then VidCon happened. Yeah, I didn't go to VidCon. I heard that it's a whole bunch of like. 12 year old kids and people that make Minecraft Minecraft videos. Uh it actually is very few people that make Minecraft videos. Oh, okay. But if there's someone that does gaming, they pretty much do Minecraft videos. Mm. It's, it's Oh, just so it's like, like YouTube personality yeah. sort of stuff. It's that whole gigantic side of YouTube that probably very few of us ever ventured into. <laughs> it's scary over there, man. <laughs> uh yeah, it's, it's like it's, the the boxy side of YouTube. Pretty much, yeah. It's like basically Philip DeFranco down. Like, mm. you know, his side of the bubble. Um Yeah, it was it was mostly 13 to 15 year old girls. Hmm. Uh we walked in and you know, Lindsay and I were who are at least twice the age of everyone there in my case three times the age <laughs> of some of them um <laughs> we just couldn't help but to basically poke fun at them like moving in herds uh quickly too um and you had to you, you couldn't stop them like once they start running you have to like just stand out of the way stampede <laughs> <laughs> uh, they legit had a bouncy house area in the back and i was like jesus christ <laughs> <laughs> like complete with like bouncy house gigantic slide, uh nice. bouncy house ball pit, uh and all this. I think it was Fail Army. It was the Fail Army. Uh they had like the whole back half of uh, and all this was taking place at the Anaheim, Anaheim Convention Center, which is the same place that BlizzCon takes place at. And I've yeah. never been to a convention there that wasn't BlizzCon, so it was interesting seeing it uh done up. They actually blocked off like a huge chunk of it to make it not look so empty. Mm. Um it wasn't packed, uh, but I mean it was but it, you felt like it because of the way, uh, because of the way the tides moved. Uh, <laughs> the random stampedes of children. Yeah, because you turn around and Mufasa's getting trampled. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, because so the, there there was actually it's funny. Uh, so so here's a little. If if any of you guys are in the if, if, if ever get in the business where you need to kind of follow what happens at a specific location, like to see what's hot and what isn't and whatever. Um, there's a little app, uh, espe- sorry, especially with the younger demographic. Um, there's an app called Yak. Uh, I think I mentioned it before, but um, if you're 25 and above, there is nothing on this app for you. This app <laughs> is purely a tool for 25 and above, and it is a gossip and just, it is like a micro Tumblr uh, type of app that basically what it is is you anonymously post something and people can vote it up. Uh, you don't get any points, there's no karma. Well, there is karma, but nobody sees it really, I don't think. Um, but the the neat thing about this app, and I wish that you know people that mattered would pick it up, like older people would pick it up, is mm-hmm. that it's location-based. Mm. So if I'm on the floor of any convention, I can pop open Yak, and I could see what people 18, or actually, I guess in this case, 15 to like 23, like what they're talking about, because that's the demographic of this app. Um, and that's incredibly handy because at a convention, it's very easy to get lost uh, yeah. amongst all the stuff. It seems like it'd be super cool. Like, I, I kind of wish I'd known about that at E3 because then I could have been looking at it and seeing like, okay, what, what are people saying looks cool mm-hmm. around it? Which, which booths should I hit up? Yep. Which, which lines are worth standing in? But any other time, this app is completely <laughs> useless. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, while I was there, it um, it it basically helped to kind of highlight why things were happening. So like when steep stampedes were happening, uh, people were basically posting that oh, some famous YouTuber is over in such and such hall, and that's it. But and so that's why like these things were happening. So I was like, okay, kind of interesting. Um, and also, they were like, oh, VidCon Prom is tonight. And I was like, oh, God, it is all like high schoolers. Jesus. Uh, oh, and we went to we went to P.F. Chang's uh, a Saturday night. And we walked in and they're like, oh, yeah, it's like a 45 minute to an hour wait. And this is the P.F. Chang's like right next to VidCon. And we're like, shit, that's, I don't know if we can do this. Well, can we go see if there's a room at the bar? And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. There's no one at the bar. Like, that's how you know it's all kids. Uh, but let me just read you some of the stuff that's in my area right now. Uh Let's see. Uh, really don't have anything going for me anymore. I'm so fucking done with life. Uh, how can a couple live off one of them, goes out and fucks someone else, and goes back to their significant other and still saying I love you? I have major trust issues. Serious Chipotle cravings right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Asian and Panda Express is a guilty pleasure. Sorry, mom and dad. <laughs> Wow. Uh, but, man, at a convention, this thing is amazing. And it really helped kind of steer uh, things. And um, uh, But anyways, so... I gotta the, download this now and see what people are talking about in my area. I'm sure it's especially handy. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Use it when you go to work. Because the complex is big enough where mm. you'll be primarily picking up. Unless there's like a nearby high school, in which case you're screwed. Um but you'll be primarily picking up like chatter uh, there. There's also a high chance that uh, no one that I work with uses this thing. I'm very interested to find out. I'm uh, yeah. I, I'm <laughs> <laughs> fuck Comcast. Hey, so there's somebody that pays bills. That's good. I can go around talking to <laughs> girls, but always get nervous and sometimes don't know what to say. I know she can sense how nervous I am. Any advice how to be more confident when talking to girls? Mm. Basically, this this app is for me. This is this is exactly what I need. See, see, yeah. there you go. And everyone, everyone is gonna download it, and they're gonna be like, "This is the best app ever." And I just, I think I just raised the uh, the target demo by at least two years just with this podcast. When you're high as fuck at LA Fitness, and everything starts to look like a nature documentary about people. <laughs> This is a new show. This is this is amazing. People, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm picking up I'm picking up UC Irvine basically. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. That's at least useful on a day to day. One of them is you're a phony. So they must they must know that I'm I'm looking at it <laughs> nine hours ago. Uh, oh God. 
Okay, yeah, so that's it. So yeah, it, the that's... whole the whole app is just full of garbage. Yeah. But uh, at E3, yeah, it, at E3, it's fantastic. Um, and anything, any anytime you go somewhere like that, uh, actually, we're gonna be going to Disneyland soon with the kid, uh, and I'm very curious to see what what that looks like on this app. Um, it's such yeah. a neat. It's, I mean, just a, a localized chat program that's like anonymous. You just post something like that is so goddamn handy. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I honestly, I wasn't expecting it to be completely anonymous. Like I, I, it occurs to me that you said anonymous at some point, but I, I, like you don't even register for this thing. Mm -hmm. You just, you just make words happen. So that's interesting. Yep. Um. So, anyways, so anyway, yeah, that that's the, that that was VidCon. That was it. I mean, <laughs> the, 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 there's the keynotes and the um and the rest of the stuff is uh is definitely interesting, but um. I think for the most part, it's I and mean, that's if you if you're gonna go, you're gonna have to spend extra to go to the creator keynotes, uh, or the industry keynotes. So I had an industry badge, so the industry keynotes were there, and uh, they focus on uh, new new forms of advertising that YouTube's working on and MCNs and stuff like that. So obviously all industry related stuff. I think the creator stuff was focused more on just basically how to market yourself and creating a brand and all that, which is also pretty handy. Uh, these these keynotes and and all that that that's. That's all pretty, uh, pretty handy stuff for sure. Uh, I, I can't imagine that anybody wants to go just for the first floor. The first floor was really just fans. It was a hundred percent fans. So unless you want to meet a YouTuber, I saw Flitz there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you were telling me. Yeah, I saw Flitz. Like the second I walk on, I, I walk on the to the back side from the back side of the uh, convention center, and there's Flitz with like a crowd of people. Mm -hmm. He's yelling at him, and I was like, "Oh, Flitz." Yeah, he was. He kind of like. He's he's sort of our our like gamer uh, infiltrator of that side of YouTube. I think. <laughs> like yes. he sort of snuck over there and he hangs out over there. <laughs> uh, I guess he was doing that guy. even before like he was on Game Breaker even. But yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got a very accessible personality. Yeah, definitely. And he's so done a lot of really fun. really high profile stuff too. Mm -hmm. Like there was that was that, that like dancing. Um, zebra movie that went around youtube ages ago um <laughs> i don't remember this uh it was a it was like two people in a dancing zebra doing all sorts of crazy shit and one of oh, them was okay flitz. yeah <laughs> yeah my claim to fame i was ass end <laughs> <laughs> yeah so speaking of events mm -hmm. by which i mean speaking of a whole bunch of people standing in line by which I mean speaking of a whole bunch of people trying to get through a door, by which I mean speaking of the dark portal, by which I mean speaking of a catastrophic occurrence that changed the face of Azeroth forever, by which I mean speaking of events. What the uh, hell? Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Uh, You're going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. So, speaking of events, uh, we're announcing the next WoW expansion in a week. I I, I heard less this. than a week at this point. It's going to be um, a week minus twelve hours. I exactly I as we're recording this. That is pretty amazing news. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting because it's at it's so. At Gamescom. What's going to be in the expansion? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Sorry, I gotta ask any important questions here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's I'm, I go. I have a few things that I can announce regarding the expansion. Um, we're finally getting the legendary taco hat in the game. Yes, so that's, you heard it here first, folks. That's good news. Um, we will be adding a a new feature called commando mode, which um, allows you to not wear pants. Um, <laughs> you heard here <her> first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually it was funny. Like I have a I have a whiteboard at my desk at work that I like keep like a list of like upcoming video projects that I'm working on. Otherwise, I'll forget. Um, and I I had a bunch of stuff scribbled on it, and there was an influencer coming through. So I like first I was like oh, I should erase all of this before he comes through because he could see something, and that would be that would be bad. Um. And then I was like, wait, no, better idea. I'll write down fake things on the board here. 
So I wrote like legendary taco hat in commando uh, mode. And there was another one that I wrote, and I wrote like the dark below and just circled it a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. It, it was one of those things where this happens regularly with me. I do something and I find it hilarious and no one else gives a single shit. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I'm cool with it cuz I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was fun. The dark below is a nice touch for everyone that doesn't play uh yeah. Destiny. Yeah. Well, or, or World of Warcraft cuz remember like two expansions ago oh but, yeah yeah i know yeah. it was even it was um it was actually um prior to warlords like the expansion the trademark quote-unquote leaked um as the dark below and then later it turned out that pretty much anybody could put a trademark as anything up on the the particular website mm-hmm. yep yeah and uh that actually happened again and the thing, same thing happened like people were just like yeah it's uh anybody could file for whatever yeah but uh yeah man in a week that's uh that's some pretty that's a pretty serious stuff. Yeah, it's um it's interesting that it's happening at Gamescom this time around. Like a lot of people, uh, I think understandably, were expecting it to happen at BlizzCon. Right. Um, but instead, it's happening <laughs> at Gamescom. So like, it's kind of cool that it can go someplace else. Um, what, we we've and we've had a little bit. Blizzard's been giving love to other conventions and. Yeah, I think it's just kind of the future of a company that, like, it used to be, like every blizzard announcement could be at blizzcon because there was an announcement every year yeah um but now there's six now franchise i'm actually yeah. losing count of the number of franchises <laughs> that blizzard is producing so it's like okay we we can't really if we can't we can't fit that many like potential announcements at blizzcon so it's like well blizzcon is no longer where blizzard announces everything there were almost certain like i I, I obviously can't give any specifics, but there will almost certainly be some sort of announcement of something at BlizzCon. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, well, why not? It's a good time to announce things. There's, there there's enough franchises. That... It'd be weird at this point if you went to BlizzCon and yeah. like, oh, well, we already blew it at uh, Gamescom. Don't really have any for you folks. Thanks for coming down. <laughs> every, <laughs> every single franchise is like, oh, shit, we already announced everything. We didn't <laughs> think we'd be able to announce it at BlizzCon. Uh, uh but yeah, no, it's it's interesting, and I don't I don't think that anybody should really expect that because the expansion isn't getting announced at BlizzCon, that BlizzCon will be any less like epic as a result of that. Like some right. of some of the best BlizzCons I've ever been to, um, even before I was at Blizzard, were ones where no expansion was announced. Yeah, and it was still still a really good time. Yeah, like we knew about Kata before uh, we went to BlizzCon. Like everybody knew. Yeah, because I remember they they played the trailer. And I was like, oh, hey, it's the same trailer. It just sounds a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, like we, that that's, yeah, yes, it's all, it's, it's happened before and it didn't make it any less exciting. Uh, and there's plenty of franchises to go around at this point. Like, I'm sure we're going to get something for Overwatch and, uh, boy, God, I mean, everything else to see who's, it's who's HD, right? So it's Warcraft, Heroes, Overwatch, Starcraft. Uh, Hearthstone, Diablo. Yep, who's HD? There you go. That's how you remember it, dude. I don't... Oh, it was an acronym. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's like, <laughs> what? what is this phrase that you're saying? <laughs> I don't think I forgot one, right? I think it's all of the... But, um... Yeah, so, BlizzCon is still gonna be awesome. And that's in, like, a few months. And good, yeah. and you know, Gamescom is such a huge, huge, huge. I didn't realize how big it was until oh, actually. Oh, yeah, it's massive. Yeah, when we were talking, have you been there? I haven't been there, no, but I I know numbers related to it. Where like BlizzCon is like what, like twenty seven thousand, I think, off the top of my head, is like the max capacity for mm-hmm. that thing. Gamescom is like three hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, like I I've heard the numbers before, but when 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 we were out drinking, uh, Olivia kind of broke down the whole the whole thing and how and she she was able to break down like the size in 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 a way that made it like it was understandable like she described the crowds um she described uh the way they set up like duplicate floors like with duplicate booths so that press can have their own uh section yeah 
Uh, otherwise, press wouldn't get anything done. Yeah. Uh, like, just the, the way she broke it down, I was just like, dear God. Like, yeah. this sounds like the Olympics. <laughs> it's it's probably worth clarifying that we were talking about Gamescom while we were drinking last week uh, for reasons that were completely unrelated to there being a World of Warcraft expansion announcement there. That did not come up. Uh, just, just in case no it, it totally didn't come up actually yeah, it just, it, which no, is it was, silly because we I had think it was actually, there and well i think it was actually like towley brought up that he was thinking of going to games oh that's right yeah he said he wanted to go yeah he said yeah. he wanted to go and then i think olivia scared him to death and yeah, he decided probably. it's probably not a good idea <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah just just wanted to make sure oh, that was clear man. because oh, i know man. i know there's bound to be people who are like oh laura's giving secrets oh, olivia's giving secrets man. no yeah right at a bar please yeah no we're, we're pretty good about that sort of thing <laughs> we're better than you. every time an announcement comes out i'm always like you guys are dicks <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't let me in on this man <laughs> you knew about this for how long <laughs> I don't yeah. even ask that anymore. I'm just like, whatever, dude. Yeah. Whatever. Oh, is that happening? Oh, that's great. Yeah. Everyone knows? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We had the project deck uh, uh, first time reveal here. And I think, that, I think that's pretty special. Yeah. And I hadn't actually, <laughs> even that I hadn't told you about. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. See? And so there you go. That, if, if that, that should be an indicator right there. Yeah, that, it's my uh, own thing. I can tell anyone I want about it. And I just didn't. <laughs> I'm just not wired that way, man. I'm not allowed to say things That's about good. stuff. That's good, man. Um, That's a so great yeah. trait to have. Oh yeah, totally. It's it's very handy. <laughs> but yeah, wow! Expansion announcement. Um, in a week. That's Tune gonna be in. yeah Thursday morning at seven Pacific. Whoa. Um, or excuse me, nine Pacific. Oh. I don't know where the word. Se- I don't even know where the number seven came from. Is it because it is the seventh? That might be what it is. I don't know. No, it's the sixth. I don't know. Thursday morning at nine. Pacific. <laughs> All right. So there, there will be a stream, uh, somewhere. I don't, I don't actually know. I'm great at my job and don't actually know where the stream is going to be. That's how you don't like leak anything. You don't know or can't remember. <laughs> it's probably <laughs> true. Yeah. Stuff. But yeah, um, I think it's blizzgc.com is the mm-hmm. website. I can check. Blizz oh, uh, Blizz, uh, yeah, BlizzGC. BlizzGC.com, yeah. So there, there will almost certainly be, um, wherever the stream is, it'll almost certainly be there. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm like a thousand percent certain that WoWhead will uh, restream it too. So if you're tied yeah. in at all to World of Warcraft, you're going to see it somehow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And so, there will be like a million tweets and stuff about it too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So speaking of games Mm -hmm. so world of warcraft big game like massive amounts of content even if like there are criticisms of warlords of draenor being kind of light on content which is fair uh thought tons of tons and tons of stuff in the game (laughs) on the opposite end of the spectrum we have rocket league which has one game type (laughs) 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 you drive a car to thing uh, and sometimes it goes in another thing. Hooray! Mm-hmm. And so it's you, really fun. <laughs> you, you've you've been playing this game, right? Mm-hmm. And what do you think? Because it's 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 obviously blown up. Uh, I've yeah, it's it's everywhere. For me, Rocket League hits a very very important um like style of gameplay for me right now, which is that. The matches last maybe three minutes. Yep. And it like it boots up really fast. I've been playing it on PS4. It boots up really fast. It's really quick and easy to jump into. The like it literally, if right now I decided I wanted to play Rocket League, I would be done with a game of Rocket League within five minutes. And Unless you score a bunch. Unless I score a bunch. But like I've been playing ranked and scoring happens a lot less in ranked because people know <laughs> know how to like defend and shit. Yeah. Um and that's that's really really useful for me right now because I tend to have an awful lot of I need to do something in 20 minutes or I'm going out with a friend in a half hour. I don't really have time to run a dungeon in World of Warcraft. I don't really have time 
to play like i've been replaying fallout 3 but half an hour is enough time to load into fallout 3 figure out what the hell it was i was doing last time (laughs) take three steps save the game and close it yeah um like even trials oftentimes can take longer than a game of rocket league like if i if i am just having trouble on a track or something oh uh, god yeah totally five minutes on an extreme yeah exactly (laughs) so it to me it's like super pick up and drop sort of gameplay like i'll play this for exactly the amount of time that i have and then i'm done and that's it so i i've i've been playing it uh and i've been wanting to like tweet things and all that stuff like all my awesome scores and all my awesome moves and whatever but i'm just like nah i'm not gonna say anything i'm just gonna wait and just play and just enjoy it yeah Uh, but so i played some ranked uh obviously a lot of just randoms um or whatever the uh the the other one was, I forget what it's called. Uh but <clears throat> yeah, it's it is I I I snubbed it for a while playing it because uh because you know the whole death ball mod thing that was basically this game but for Unreal Tournament. Uh, and it was funny, they talked about the origins of uh of Rocket League and they actually made it as a mod for Unreal Tournament. So that's kind of a nice <laughs> little <laughs> I knew it looked familiar enough, but uh uh yeah it's free on ps uh on psn ps plus right now uh through the end of the month so if you're listening to this i think today would be the last day that you could get it before they switch over to something else um and so that's why i jumped on it it was, it was getting to the end of the month and i was just like okay i should just get it because otherwise it's like 1999 on steam right right so this is if you have a ps4 by the way obviously yeah, yeah. um but yeah it, exactly what you said uh super fast to get into games are stupidly fast um it's it's a lot of fun even if you don't know what you're doing you're fucking just throwing your car all over the place it's so <laughs> yeah. i explained it to my wife and i was like i realize this sounds really dumb but it's actually a lot of fun because it's like it's kind of like a slimmed down version of like a derivative of a derivative of a uh, soccer uh but you have rocket powered cars that can jump and do backflips and she's like okay <laughs> <laughs> well then it's like you kind of have to you have to like if someone explains Rocket League to you, you're kind of like, eh, okay, sure. You you go play with your toys. But if you see Rocket League being played, you're like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. Yeah. And then as soon as you're holding a controller and actually playing it, like the gameplay is so tight that you're like it's it's very rare that you feel like anything happened that you did not expressly will to happen right. in that game. Yeah. And when it That's does, true. it's because someone else like ran, rammed into you or something, not because you were like, oh, I pushed this button and it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's the sort of game where when you fuck up, with the exception of when someone else runs into you, which can be super frustrating, by the way, uh, <laughs> the number of times I've been like about to about to score and I'm like headed straight at the ball and it's like going to be straight on into the thing and the ball's just sitting on the ground. I'm like, I got this, I got this. And then someone from my team drives. It doesn't even hit the ball. They just ram me out of the way of the ball and it just sits there. And I'm like, why would you do this? Look at your screen. Um, but yeah, no, it just plays super, super tight and it's really fun to play. So yeah. And you unlock things, and that is that is the number one thing that will keep me playing a game forever. Is oh, Every you finished match? Yeah, you finished a match. You get a hat. Okay. Oh, I'm even though you lost, done. you yeah. get something. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't even have to win; you just play. And and that's that's a really really interesting thing to me about Rocket League is even though you don't have to win matches, you don't have people AFKing. To, yeah, to unlock very stuff. rarely do you have people AFKing. Yeah, and I think it's sort of like... Like, I know a lot of games, uh, World of Warcraft included, honestly, do a lot of stuff to try to limit the, um, the need for people to AFK. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe in Rocket League, it part of it is that you don't actually get any real advantage for unlocking anything. Like, you're not going to get a new hat that you could put on your car and now you jump higher or anything like that. <laughs> Um, some of the cars that you can unlock, like just by the virtue of their shape, can be a little bit more useful in certain situations. But that's about it. And even um, that is debatable, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's it's a bounding box. It's not the actual shape of the car, but it might yeah. f- 
feel like because you can see the bounding box maybe you feel like you have more flexibility yeah i've seen a lot of people using the really boxy <clears throat> cars because mm -hmm. like you could you get a better like visual representation of exactly where your car is going to hit yeah um but still like this ultimately irrelevant you can you can do just as good with any other car um, it's just interesting to me that they don't have that problem. And I, I, it's also possible that maybe they have some sort of like algorithm. That's like, if someone doesn't do an input after X amount of time, then boot them. Um, and maybe it's just that like the game is simple enough that people don't feel the need to AFK in it. Like the matches are so fast. Yeah. The matches are you super have time fast. To AFK. Yeah, and like like if you're AFKing to unlock stuff, what are you going to do with the stuff that you unlock? You're going to do the exact same thing that you would have been AFKing for. So why would you do that? And it's just it's just interesting to me that like from from a sort of someone with an interest in game design, when a game doesn't have a problem where you kind of think, well, they should have this issue. Uh is it's interesting to me. I don't know. I yeah. find it, I find it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it's 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 a crazy amount of fun um yeah, it really is i think i got i guess so i got mvp on my first game uh and wow. so that was pretty awesome uh, i actually it's scored all downhill I, from there i scored yeah, i scored the first <laughs> goal and i got mvp and i was like Psh, this game was easy but and and I actually I I think my my win rate is actually pretty good. I, I actually I don't know what a good win rate is. My win rate is like sixty seven to sixty eight percent. Um. But that's in like randoms. Like in ranked, I, it, it's definitely more even, I believe. But uh, but yeah, in randoms, it's like I played a match. We got like nine points, and the other team had like two. And then the next match, it was like. Zero is zero and a struggle <laughs> the entire time. And it went into overtime and we scored the winning goal. We scored, no, they scored the winning goal on us in overtime. Yeah. And so it was just like, and, and, uh, but yeah, it's, it was, it's, it is a super fun game. I'm playing on PS4. I'm not, I haven't touched it on, um, on Steam yet. Uh, but I do own it on Steam. So it's just like, right now I'm just going to get it. <laughs> so only the people that listen to this podcast are going to know this, but I'm going to play and get really, really, really good. Or at least really, really mediocre uh, <laughs> at the game on the PS4, and then I'm gonna try, and then I'm gonna fire up the stream, and be like, "Hey guys, let's check out this Rocket League and see what this game's all about," <laughs> <laughs> and then just go on there and wreck face. At least yeah. then, if I get on and I'm trash, like people will be like, "Hey, he's not bad for being new." <laughs> nice. That's yeah. my strategy. I'm actually planning to stream after we're done recording this. I was thinking of streaming WoW, but now I'm kind of thinking of streaming some Rocket League. Dun, dun, dun. That's how dun, it gets dun, you. Dun. I'll probably still stream WoW. And Rocket League. Dun, dun, dun. Sorry. <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> yeah. Gotta get that Conquest cap. Yo. <laughs> the, the queues, man. You could probably get it in the queues. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Not, not as hard. Not as oh, hard. yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> um anyways yeah stupidly fun game if you have a ps4 uh and ps plus just fire that thing up and just just tag it and add it to your library uh at a, at a minimum you don't have to download yeah. it right now yeah if you if you have a ps4 and ps plus and don't have rocket league you are wrong <laughs> yeah you are very wrong like, I, you are just wrong almost all the games on i'll show my wife that too because i was like look at how i'm saving money it's like look at all these games i got for free ish yeah <laughs> it's like every game i have is like a game that was previously on uh yeah. PS the other plus. the other ps plus game is actually really good too like it's not it's not nearly rocket Lo rocket league levels of good oh the one with the goblin on it yeah the sticks master of a shadows or whatever like it's actually a pretty decent little like stealth game. Huh. I I I played it for only about an hour, but I still played it a bit and it's pretty it's pretty good. What's pretty the good. uh camera perspective? I only saw a couple screenshots uh, but third person. Third person. Okay. Yeah. Is it third person like uh okay, huh. It's third person like um every okay. third person. Yeah, yeah, no no I know no. It's that not it's question. not over it's... the shoulder. It's behind. Right. Interesting. So not Gears of War, but mm -hmm. is it like just like a third person thief or third person Metal Gear like type of sneaking yeah third, around? third person thief mm -hmm. sort of sneaking around. Huh, um, interesting. It's got um, it, it it actually plays a little bit like a stealthier Assassin's Creed in a way um, because you're not really doing the like parkour level stuff from yeah. Assassin's Creed, um, but you do like the combat is similar. 
Right. Like when you do actually get caught in combat and the rest of the time you're just sneaking around and staying out of sight and stuff. It's very I'll sort of it like, out. it's kind of, I would almost call it like a stealth puzzler because you'll, you'll like come to a room and it's like, okay, I have to figure out how to get to the other side of this room. Um, so like I, I distract this guard and put out this torch and sneak across here when this guard does that. And then I can move on to the next room. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I'll have to check it out. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, there's there's a bunch of games that I've gotten on there that yeah. have actually proven to be pretty good. So yeah, yeah, it's not amazing, but it's still pretty good. Mm-hmm. I've also like there's a couple other games that I've gotten through the PS Plus that I've played a lot of. Um, Steam World Dig, that was my last one. Mm. Have you been tagging every month? You I've been tagging them it. every month. I don't think I've actually played that one. Yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty good little like, uh, it's like Dig Dug but with progression and mm. a little bit of story. And the that story is sounds a, amazing, actually. <laughs> yeah, the story is a little, it's a little interesting. Like, I'm actually very curious to see where things they kind of tag, they kind of string you along with like these little bits and pieces of like what's like why you ended up in that town. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it felt it started to get a little repetitive, and I was like, okay, I'm just digging, I'm just digging, I'm digging, and then it's like, whoa, it's a whole new area. What the hell? Everything changed. And you go back up top, they're like, whoa, we didn't know that stuff was down there. Bring us stuff up, blah blah blah. And it was, it's just like there's so many unlocks and there's so many different things, and it's such a simple, uh, platforming type system, uh, it's, and it's just good. Yeah, it's on Vita too. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah, like I have a I have a Vita, and that's another nice thing about PS Plus is that. Oftentimes, the games that you get for PS4, you also get on Vita. And even, like, when it's not, like, there's still a free Vita game every month, usually. Mm-hmm. Which, actually, I haven't checked this month. I need to go check and see what the free Vita game is for this month. Yeah, this, I'll, have to, I'll have to give it a go. Speaking of indie games? So, speaking of indie games, by which I mean... Speaking of people that are pretty desperate to get their name out there sometimes, <laughs> by which I mean, <laughs> speaking of developers that Ouya fucked over, uh, Razor bought Ouya. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like, I don't remember exactly when it was last week sometime, I think. Razor was like, we've bought Ouya. But, like, even before then, Ouya was having some major problems. Like, mm-hmm. Ouya went to shit really fast. And it was sort of like, I think it was kind of a long time coming because you were like, like even a year or two years ago, it was like, okay, Ouya, yeah, you're just, you're just not what you were hoping to be. It's or pretty obvious. Or what they said it would be. Yeah, exactly. Like this is, this is not, this is not working, Ouya. You're not doing very well. Your, your little box is like the games on it just aren't great. Mm-hmm. Like there was Towerfall and everyone's like, oh my God, Towerfall, it's so good. And I played Towerfall. I was like, this is crap. I don't. Towerfall is great. No, it's you not. have to, you have to have a handful of people. Maybe, maybe that, maybe I, maybe I've like, I've only ever played it with two people. Yeah. So you have to have, it's the chaos factor really kind of, it kind of lends itself to it. I would, I would rather play Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> if I have a bunch of people in a room, I have five games on my Wii U that I would play before I even that, remember I have okay, an Ouya. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now, keep in mind that when the Ouya was first uh, oh, yeah, yeah. None of the... first introduced, before it was even released, because even after, even when it was released, actually, but it was something that wasn't common. Uh, people were, you know, people, sure, people were like, oh, yeah, I could just take my Android phone and hook it up HDMI out and blah, blah, blah. But that's not yeah. a common thing, right? Like, that's not well, something Well, and even that... then, like, an Android phone costs, like, 500, 600 bucks. <laughs> yeah, there's that part, too. <laughs> uh, and I think the only thing that we really had was, like, Apple TV and Roku and maybe, like, a couple others. But it was, like, these are boxes that don't, they don't play games. Yeah. Uh, they basically just stream video or something. Uh, and so it was definitely something that was unique, but it just yeah, didn't do... it was a good do... concept. Yeah, it just... It just it didn't have the power that they said it would have. So like when you played it, it just did not play well. Um, I think the biggest thing that turned me off, uh, and a lot I mean a lot of people, was that we couldn't record anything from it. Yeah. So like they want you to play these games on it, but they had HDCP enabled full time, and they said before that it would only be enabled when you're playing videos. And nope, they just left it on full time and they never addressed it. Yeah. I mean. There are ways around that. Oh but. God, yeah, but that whole God. Oh. But still, yeah, it's yeah. No, it's I, you're, you're right. You're right. There are totally ways around that, and it's just like the the 
the process of like, ugh, it's yeah. a pain in the ass. Like when I when I was doing just the tip, like every like there there was HTCP enabled on my S3 all of the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to find creative solutions around it. Um, which basically basically came down to having a preview window that I then captured the preview window instead of uh instead of actually directly capturing from the from the S3 itself. Yeah. Um which was a bit janky, but it worked. It worked, yeah, it worked. Yeah. But I mean like they didn't they just didn't if if they wanted when you make a game device, you need gamers to promote your product. Yep. The fucking box is only so goddamn interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that's it. After that, that's the end of it. I can't show you what the game actually does because I can't record it. Yeah, well, and like the, um, like at the time it was first announced, it was before the PS4 and the Xbox One had been announced. Like yeah, at the yep. time it was still the 360 and the PS3, and I guess kind of the Wii, but not really. Um, and those were the only consoles that people were really playing. So it was a new console that had competitive ish hardware. At the time, and you were like, "Oh yeah, I could totally see like any of the games that show up on the uh, the Xbox 360 arcade, uh, the Xbox Live arcade would totally, totally be playable on the on the Ouya." But then it took them like a year and a half from their Kickstarter to get the thing out. Which sure, like I guess I I I believe that producing a console is a time consuming process. It just completely missed their window of opportunity. Like I didn't, I I kickstarted the Ouya. Like when the when the Kickstarter started, yeah. Because at the time I was producing content full time, like as a my my full time job was YouTube content. I did not get my Ouya until after I moved to California. <laughs> <You> moved. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yeah. Oh, that's see, that's shitty. It was it was long enough for me to apply for a job at Blizzard, interview for a job at Blizzard, accept a job at Blizzard. Uh, move wait, across the wait country. a month and a half because of a divorce and then move across the country <laughs> yeah <coughs> oh man yeah. yeah um and yeah so it's and then yeah, so then razor bottom and yeah. which and everybody is, kinda went, oh it must just be for the store which realistically it probably is just for the store oh yeah i'm sure they're gonna go to the nvidia route yeah they're gonna create their own uh, Google Play platform uh, and turn it into their the Razor Box or the Razor Cube or the I don't know what they're gonna call it, but um, yeah, that, that's but the problem is that there's still all these developers that haven't been paid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's 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 sort of what I was referring to when I started this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Is that a while ago? Ouya was like, you know what? We're a failing company. Let's go ahead and give a ton of developers a million dollars. It's like, or they, uh. they had set aside a million dollars for this fund uh, that they were going to match developers' Kickstarters. And um, they ended up being that, <clears throat> like, they, they <laughs> so this, this sentence, I'm reading uh, the article about it on Polygon, this sentence should raise some red flags, which says, Initially, participation required that the Kickstarter raise at least $50,000, but that was later lowered to 10000 after some loopholes caused the company to rework the rules. Like, yeah. when you have to rework the rules on something like, we'll match your Kickstarter funds, something somebody done fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> well, what people were doing was, like, I was, do 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 Hey, Uncle Rich Guy. Hey, can you, like, hook me up with $10,000? I'll pay you right back. Yeah. You know, double your money. <laughs> yeah. well, Here's that... a Kickstarter for bullshit ass game. Hey, Uncle Boop, there it is, and matched. Ta da. Yeah, money. well, like, it was 50000 and they lowered it to 10000 Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So, like, all of those problems. But then also, like, well, and, and seriously, like, if you, like, if you're an indie developer, chances are at least a lot of them would be able to front the ten thousand dollars to front to fund themselves and then have Ouya pay them pay them back because they'll they'll get their ten thousand dollars back regardless. Yeah. And then like obviously it requires having <clears throat> having the ten thousand dollars to begin with, but of course. some indie devs are able to do that. And, at least I would hope so to start. Yeah. And so lol. Um <laughs> <laughs> but then apparently, like only only about twenty five percent of the developers that actually qualified for this were ever actually given any of their money. <laughs> yeah. So 
the end result is that Ouya owes um, about 600, a little bit more actually than $600,000 to, uh, to indie developers. Well, not anymore. Uh, well, now that's basically Razor's on the hook for it now. Wait, um, are they, they on the hook? Because I don't think those are transferable. They have said that they will pay it. Oh, okay. Well, I trust Razor more than. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Ra- Razor, does, yeah. Razor, Razor, Razor can Razor can afford six hundred thousand dollars. I'm fairly mm-hmm. sure. Um, so they they'll they'll be fine with that. It may have even been like something that Razor knew about going into the deal, um, before they bought the uh, before they actually bought Ouya. Um. Interestingly enough, and I may I say interestingly enough, but really this is just kind of obvious. Razor bought. Uh, Ouya's software, online store, and name, but not its hardware. And oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, <laughs> I think Razer could probably do a little bit better because yeah, that totally. that little that little box, like, okay, sure. Four years ago, that little box was pretty neat. Oh yeah, dude. But even once, even two years ago, when I got mine, like the controllers were just garbage. Like yeah. they they used the like the shitty old version of Bluetooth that doesn't have like proper like uh ps4 controllers use bluetooth and they're super snappy and responsive and awesome the ouya controller uses the older shittier version of of bluetooth and occasionally they just kind of decide to fuck off yeah <laughs> yeah occasionally you'll be playing a game and your dude will just wander off into oblivion because mine was actually engineered like crap uh yeah. one of the the whole this is something you never ever think of when you play uh using a controller you never think if I hit this A button hard enough, it might actually get stuck because the hold that's chiseled out of it is off center. <laughs> <laughs> you never. I mean, it basically became a turbo button depending on what game I was playing. Nice. <laughs> yeah, like if I push down this button and then slide my thumb just slightly, it, it gets stuck. <laughs> it may never come back up again. Oh man, that was the most frustrating thing. I yeah, I Craigslisted that thing, and some the guy that bought it said that he's. He just wants something for his kids and, you know, so they could stream movies or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, well, it will do that. Yeah. If you, <laughs> if you want an expensive Chromecast, the Ouya is fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And it doesn't even function like a Chromecast on top of yeah. everything else. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So, good. I mean, I'm, I'm actually, I'm glad that Razer bought it. Not, not because, you know, I feel like they're getting a good deal. And they might have got a good deal. Um, but I'm glad that the, the Ouya saga is actually over now. Yeah, I'm glad. <sighs> yeah. Like nothing, this is the end, right? Like nothing, unless Razor like goes out of business and the devs are still screwed, which would be like, that would suck. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, there's nothing else. Like what, what else could possibly happen? We now have a large company in control of everything and they said they're going to pay these guys out. So the last step is really just paying them out and that's it. We're done. Yeah. Yep, everybody can hopefully walk away from it at least moderately happy. And um, smarter. And smarter, yes. Well, maybe not the Ouya people, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, hopefully, man. hopefully. We learn so much. We need, we need things like, like this to, to give us perspective. Like Some of these pessimistic and cynical attitudes, like they're, they're not born of... I'm just a cynical person just because I am like these things happen and they give us perspective. So when you go to a Kickstarter and it seems something like something that is, you know, wow, this is incredible. Why didn't anyone think about this before? Like, holy crap. And oh, they're raising millions of dollars. It's like, okay, well, like I, I backed star citizen and then I backed out. Mm. Um, I backed out because <laughs> I, they <they're laughs> for a totally cynical, stupid fucking reason. <laughs> they were sending me too many updates. <laughs> that was, I yeah, canceled no, my, I, my huh? I completely, I am completely uh, uh, right there with you. <laughs> I was just like, Jesus, yes, I get it. You're gonna keep adding shit forever until the game doesn't come out. Like that, that was the promise. I was just like, I was. It wasn't that they kept spamming my box. Like that was the funny part of it. I thought uh, it was that I felt like this project is now getting so bloated that it's just never gonna happen. And, you know, a lot, I mean, I'm sure Star Citizen will eventually happen, but look at all these games that are probably going to come out before it or are already out. You know, uh, Space Engineers is a very good start to the open space world, right? They're going to add planets in like two weeks or something. Um, I hope, has fingers crossed. Uh, mm-hmm. No Man's Sky it looks amazing. 
right? Yeah. It's like and it, it's like okay, so by the time Star Citizen is complete and all its modules are all linked together and everything, like we might see like a rework in Dust, and that works now with Eve more fluidly, and it's on PC, and so like oh, the FPS portion is covered. And then it's like, well, the exploration part No Man's Sky has. So it's going to be like, well, what does it really bring to the table? Yeah. <sighs> yep. So yeah, that's it. That's all I got. So um, as I was looking at this, th- this is this brand new topic that I just saw. That was that the I, shittiest transition ever. I remembered. <laughs> so speaking of shitty controllers, by which I mean speaking of... Um, there's a controller <laughs> that's being announced, <laughs> by which I mean, speaking of maybe not shitty controllers. So, no, this is, I actually saw this like a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh, we should talk about that on the show. And then I totally forgot about it. Um, but there's actually an officially licensed PS4 mouse and keyboard controller coming um, in October. Oh, is it licensed? I saw it, but I didn't know it was licensed. I just saw yeah. it and I kind of skimmed over it. According, but it according to the company that makes it, it actually looks fairly solid. I'm looking at some pictures of it. It's called the Hori um tactical wow. assault commander for h-o-r-i don't get any any <laughs> weird ideas there uh tactical mm-hmm. assault commander four they apparently made one for the ps3 um which i don't i don't know anything about um but it's interesting that they're they're actually making this mouse and keyboard style controller um instead of like having to use the goofy like um was it chronos max thing um, which I've used twice and decided I hated. Ah, oh, it's I, it's I could not it's, stand it. It is clumsy. You have to have a PC nearby. Super clumsy, but when it works, it works amazing. The problem, the problem that I had with it is I couldn't get a setup for it that the aiming actually felt responsive in the mm. game. Yeah, it's the uh, decel- the acceleration that gets you. Yeah, exactly. Like <clears throat> I kept, I kept going. Oh, I only need to move my mouse a little bit. And it would just not ever, ever actually move at all, and yeah. that to me made it unplayable. Yeah. So, so this thing, this this thing looks like a half a keyboard, right? Yeah, it's like half a keyboard, and then there's a mouse that actually plugs into the half a keyboard thing. Thank God for that. Yeah. Holy crap! Somebody finally figured it out. So here's what's interesting about this, though, to me at least. Huh. Um, obviously things like like the Cronus Max and like the what is it the Zim Four I think is what the other one the expensive one the one that yeah. I probably should have gotten, um, <laughs> or call uh, that that do like people have known about those for a long time and they exist, um, and even, like in Destiny people would complain about them a lot like if you're playing with a controller and you die obviously it's because the other guy's using a mouse and keyboard there's no <laughs> way that he just came across me or he's good at aiming or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, the, this is going to be much easier for people to actually set up because the, the Chronos Max and the Zim 4, they were a pain in the ass because, like you said, you had to have a computer nearby. You had to actually have wires running to the computer. You had to have a PS4 controller plugged into uh. the thing. Like, it's it's a pain in the ass to set it up. It's a lot of work for, ultimately, in my opinion at least, very little gain yeah. compared to just spent... Like, the, the amount of time that I would have had to spend getting used to the clunky way that it aims in Destiny... I could also like I and had already gotten used to just aiming with the controller. Yeah. Um so this thing though is going to be theoretically way more accessible. And I don't know if it will still have the same sort of aiming issues. Um but the fact that you can literally just plug it in and go with it, I think it poses some interesting challenges for esports. Because for a lot of first person shooters, specifically Call of Duty comes to mind as as a big one. Um a hundred percent of the well, I won't say a hundred percent. A big port a big part of the Call of Duty esports are based on console. Yeah. So does this mean that now the PlayStation 4 isn't an acceptable like avenue for esports? Because I, I think that things like the Cronus Max and the Zim 4, like I'm okay with them purely because a they're still super clunky and b very few people will actually put the effort in to use them yeah yeah, yeah. So, so it keeps the number of users to a minimum so yeah it kind of it keeps the playing i yeah you and i had this argument before about which is better and blah 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 but i mean like i get it like it, it keeps yeah. it a a pure landscape for the most part yeah if if it was like if i was able to plug into my chronos max and have destiny as like feeling as smooth and awesome 
as playing something like CSGO on my PC felt mm-hmm. like. If I had that super snappy feel with it, mm-hmm. I would 100% not be okay with the Cronus Max. Like, not even a little bit. The fact that it's still a little bit janky in its own way makes me a little bit more okay with it because you do act to, you still have to adjust for it and, and learn to use it properly and everything. Mm-hmm. It does to me then start to fall in, like you were saying when we were first arguing about this, like it does start to fall into the, like, this is the, this is the shittiness I prefer sort of yeah. <laughs> side of things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would rather the shittiness that means I'm holding a mouse than the shittiness that means I'm using a thumbstick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if this thing is not shitty, and it costs about $130, um, if this thing is not shitty, I think that could be a severe problem for shooters on consoles i think they would just make a rule just to say you can't compete unless you are yeah i think in in person esports they would do that but we live in a day and age where you Mm -hmm. really can't like restrict like how are you going to tell if you're if your qualifier rounds are played online like how are you going to tell like for example um uh blizzard with world of warcraft um we're doing the online qualifiers which by the way we're doing another uh broadcast this weekend um saturday starting at 2 p.m pacific time uh, we'll be casting the round of eight for the second qualifier cup and two teams are qualifying this time and so far the teams that are have gotten through to the round of uh round of eight actually look amazing oh and holy shit i just refreshed the brackets sorry i'm gonna geek out for a second here method beat tony del bronx uh (laughs) two to one and that that is a big deal so we're actually gonna get to see method play on saturday um, versus someone called Rise of Le Sock, uh, which is a team that There's I know There's still only one about. method, right? Method EU, right? Uh, so Method started up a uh, esports division for uh-huh. a while. Okay, and so it is, it is the Method. It's not some team that the, just called themselves Method for fun. Yeah, no, it's the same. It's the same organization, but they are all North American. It's um, actually I don't know where Mez is from off the top of my head. Um, I believe like he ha- he'd have to be North American in some capacity to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, participating in this thing but he might be from like australia or something i, I just don't know um but then it's uh cdu van Ruki and azale are the other people on the team interesting so those are those are some those are some big names <laughs> yeah. um anyway i don't i got distracted from that i don't remember <laughs> what we were oh we were talking about the mouse and keyboard thing um online qualifiers yes so for in-person events we have a strict set of rules about what what scripts and macros you're allowed to use but we have no way to check those for online. So we had to say, just kind of say, well, if you want to have any chance at regionals, like if you qualify and want to have any chance at regionals, then you should really probably uh, get used to using only these scripts and macros. Um, and you can't use add-ons or anything at regionals either. Um, Woo. But I am sure there are people right now that are playing in these qualifier cups that are using other, other macros. They're using add-ons and stuff. Yeah. And they're just like, well, if we qualify, it's fine as well. Like if they qualify and then go, well, we qualified. So now we need to practice a bunch without all this stuff like that. That's a, not an ideal strategy perhaps, but it's maybe. No, and, so, and sometimes it shows too. Like you, you'll get to, well, let's so I think with, uh, with wow, but like the difference between a controller and a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like, wow, yeah. there, there are actually like, it's mostly the add-ons thing. Like there are some add-ons that give a significant advantage in WoW arenas if you use them like as a crutch, basically. Like if you yeah. if you run Gladius in WoW arenas, then you never have to try and figure out. Like, you don't have to worry about uh, are they going to be immune to my polymorph? Are they fully dr'd? Yeah, whatever. you have to. Yeah, you have to keep track of it. Yeah, you don't have to keep track of that yourself. Whereas if you don't run any add-ons at all, that's something you kind of have to be thinking about. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, basically where I was going with that is there's a there's a I would be concerned about the sudden addition of mouse and keyboard like solid mouse and keyboard gameplay to console games um, for and also just for in general. Like if it, if it becomes something where you can spend one hundred thirty dollars and just completely dominate anybody in Call of Duty on PS4, that's not good. <laughs> that's the definition of pay to win. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, I just I, I I'm the fact that it's licensed. I mean, I, I heard about it and I was kind of like, oh, cool. But I, I just did not pay attention to the fact that it was licensed. Yeah. And that's that does change the the entire perspective uh, 
on that tool. Yeah. But and I guess the other thing that's maybe worth pointing out is that the reason that um, the Cronus Max is janky in Destiny has nothing to do with the Cronus Max and everything to do with Destiny. Because yeah. Destiny has the auto aim assist and you can't turn it off in Destiny. Yeah. But in other games, start, you can. Yeah. And if other, in other games, if, well, and even if, if, if it's officially licensed and games actually start officially supporting it. Yeah. Like that's, that's a pretty big deal. Like that, that's when it becomes a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, it's, it's, I, 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 I don't really know what to say. It's like, it's, it's. The, the switch between a keyboard and mouse and and, uh, and a controller. Some people are just really, really good with controllers, and I get it. You know, it's like some people can wreck face with a mouse and keyboard. There's a level of precision there that's unmatched, and blah blah blah. But it's like I just I I I have my doubts. Um, you know, part of my whole thing with the mouse and keyboard is that I'm really good at this tool, uh, but people are better than I am with this tool using a controller um and now it's like this is basically something that's going to say well now we get to see who is the most skilled regardless of what platform or what what uh, or now we'll be able to see the actual data uh and if we start to see the keyboard and mice are dominating then we'll know um but hey you know we don't know like what if this thing comes out and people and they uh, they accept them into tournaments but like none of them ever make it that far because people are really that good with just their thumbs uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's just a matter of skill cap. And like when you're playing especially in an esports event, you're going to assume that people are playing relatively close to the the skill cap, like the the highest maximum efficiency that people are able to actually play. Mm -hmm. Like I've been watching SG, SGDQ all week, and I can imagine one of those like the the crazy shit that they can pull off. Like if they spent that amount of time with something that allowed them to precisely point at exactly where they wanted their character to be instead of having to swing around, mm -hmm. like that would be insane. And these are the sorts of people that like that. That's the same sort of skill set that someone would take into an uh, into an esport. And so I I do actually really kind of worry about a situation where it becomes just because like a mouse is always going to be able to move faster than the fastest thumbstick can move accurately at mm -hmm. the very least. Um, I, I don't, I don't think there's really much room for debate there. So yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> you put that sensitivity to ten, and it gets crazy. Oh, I I play uh, I play Destiny with sensitivity on ten. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's it's that, not it's not it's still not as fast as whipping your mouse around really quick. And yeah, that you're right that that is that is totally true. I I uh, that's I can't argue that. Like I really can't. I, but it's gonna vary game to game. Like because now we're getting into like situational stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But for it's. Sure. But I, I really, I hope that this thing does take off. Uh, I, I see it being very handy, especially to a lot of people that have um, the space for a keyboard. Or sorry, for yeah, for a small keyboard and mouse. Um, but like for me, my PS4 has become a living room instrument, and I don't want a keyboard and mouse down there. <laughs> yeah, it's like I just want to be able to do things with a controller, and that's it. I'm good. But we'll yeah. see. Yep. It's interesting. So that was that was a huge distraction because I saw a related article and I clicked on it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so speaking of things that are kind of janky. Uh, perfect. Windows 10 came out. <laughs> it's not good, perfect. You don't need to take it any farther. That's it. It's done. Yeah. Um, uh, I have not installed Windows 10 yet. Should I? Uh... So everything, so my so my biggest thing that the I was fact that about, you're starting the answer like this means no to me. <laughs> <laughs> so my experience, uh, initially, I, I I was like I held off for like six hours <laughs> because I was because I didn't know if my 1010 LT, which is my my audio card, would work. And one guy, one Amazon reviewer that tested the preview build said it worked, mm. and I was like, oh, thank God. Okay, if it worked for this guy, it'll work for me. And so I upgraded. Wall. Now, something to keep in mind is that upgrading, it's super easy to roll back if you need to. It saves oh, everything okay. to a small, like, two or three gigabyte folder. And you can oh, very quickly roll back if you need to. It takes, like, two minutes. That's good. Um, so if you see a folder that's, like, two gigabytes, don't delete it because you think it's leftover installation files. Because <laughs> you won't be able to roll back. 
keep that in mind, please. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I have not had any issues. Um, a couple of little things to get used to. Like, I had to disable a bunch of crap, and um, Cortana was, like, getting my nerves. It doesn't like Cortana at all. Um, a lot of privacy stuff I had to disable. It's basically the same as setting up an OS for the first time, right? Uh, I have noticed that the OS is much zippier. Uh, I'm coming from Windows 7, uh, and it's, it is a lot faster just kind of zipping around looking for things and all that. And actually, one reason why I really love my Mac is because I can just command space and, it, and it's called searchlight and you just type in like three letters so I'll type in lig in it's lightroom hit enter mm. lig enter boom and i'm in lightroom uh i don't i don't actually know how to use the finder on because they changed find like a couple os uh, versions ago uh which is their explorer uh and now it's like retarded so i can't even figure it out because i'm retarded <laughs> uh and i so i use searchlight for everything i basically just i just search for it there it is boom i have it good uh, I've kind of gotten in the same habit with, with Windows, but Windows 7 was much slower at pulling up those things. So I had everything like pinned all over the place in Windows 7. Uh, so the new Windows search bar, whenever I search for something, it's super fast. Uh, so now I can search just like, and basically open apps just as quick as I can on my Mac. So that's great. Um, I haven't experienced the, everyone saying that games run a lot smoother, like not even taking into consideration DX, whatever. Like they just say games in general run smoother. I haven't quite experienced it yet, but I also haven't run any graphic intensive games. Secrets of Grandia is not uh, very intense. Um, I will say though that because of the overall, f everything feels a little bit smoother and faster. Like I even feel like when I'm watching YouTube videos that they're a little bit smoother, like HTML5, uh, whatever the plugin they're using to display that, uh, that video overlay is much smoother and I actually feel like it looks better. It could be, could be a placebo effect, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's just, there are a couple of nice things in it. Uh, the, of course, right before this show, um, I realized that DX story wasn't updated and, uh, I usually use DX story to record, uh, the show because it does a really good job of recording multiple tracks. Um, so it failed. And so it's like, okay, it, it, it it doesn't record any audio for some reason. I don't know why. So now I fired up Premiere and I couldn't get Premiere to see the input. And that's totally a configuration issue. I could see it because it's recording my voice right now. So that's good. You're recording mm. your voice. Yeah. We did a silly little countdown at the beginning to get in sync. <laughs> so so we're we're perfectly good. We're at, we're in time now. So I could sync it up. But still, it's like there are little tiny things that are rearing its head every once in a while. It's just kind of like, okay, hopefully that gets fixed soon. Um but otherwise, it's awesome. Like it's it's just a little. It's basically just taking Windows Seven, making it a little bit faster. Yeah, I I've been holding off on upgrading just because I I have the the heebie-jeebies, just like built in about oh it's the new Windows. Maybe we'll wait and wait and see. But I guess people mm -hmm. have been using it for quite a while at this point. Yeah. So, I'm 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 basically holding. I've heard some some weird like issues that people have been having with wow and i'm not entirely like a lot of them seem to be people that didn't update their video drivers after they updated oh god that's right that was a pain in the ass i had to uninstall and reinstall my drivers mm. and even you can't upgrade it you have to like uninstall the whole deal and then like start from scratch mm. oh man yeah that yeah i will say that was definitely a pain in the ass it didn't recognize the second monitor all that stuff but mm. yeah go on sorry yeah so i'm just kind of just kind of holding out to I guess, find out all of that info, like things that I'm going to have to do to make it work uh, mm -hmm. before I do anything. Um, yeah, I, I, I would I would recommend waiting. Um, I, I just did it because everybody at work was doing it and they're just like, oh, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. And really, my only thing was I don't want my two hundred dollar audio card to stop working. <laughs> I mean, it, it was two hundred dollars back when it was like hot, but they haven't made a new driver for it since Windows 7. So I know that drivers sometimes just work, and I wanted to make sure that it would. Um, and so really that was the only blocker that I had. And now, now it's in, and it seems to work. Pretty, everything seems to work just fine. Little quirks here and there. I, things will open up in weird programs. It's like, what is this stupid program? I didn't use Windows 8. I use it just enough to know that I hated it. 
and <laughs> and that was it. Uh, I I used it long enough to install Start Eight, which basically put a Windows uh, a Start menu in Windows Eight to make it look like Windows Seven, and that was like it. That's all I did with Windows Eight. Um, so yeah, it just it feels like Windows Seven with the a couple of little perks here and there. But I would wait though. If I didn't delete that stupid fucking folder, I would actually I would actually just roll back. Just as now that I've experienced it, it's like, okay, I got it. I know what's what's waiting for me when the they fix the bugs. I would actually roll back, but I deleted that stupid folder because I'm a dumbass. Nice. Yep. Good job. <sighs> All right. That's it. Yeah. There was something else I was gonna say and now I've forgotten what it was. There well, was there I had a I had another last minute last minute uh topic link link that you clicked on link is that another link. announcement that you didn't tell me about no okay it wasn't a link that i clicked on either it was something else that i thought of and it's gone now well there you go yeah so um i guess that's that then mm. oh i remember it was oh gosh i remember top gear yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. In the in the happiest possible ending ever, um, Amazon has picked up Jeremy Clarkson, uh, James May, and uh, Richard Hammond, and as as well as like I forget the guy's name, but it's the like head producer mm-hmm. of. Um, I can actually pull it up here real quick. The like head the the head producer that was working on Top Gear for the BBC, um, Amazon has picked all of them up to make a Andy Wilman is the guy's name to make a new show for Amazon prime. So it's like, hang on. So not only is this, uh, not only are they going to make top gear again or something similar to it, which they've said, Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have very, very expected themes or something like that. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Cause I can't say it's going to be top gear. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I want to find the, it's funny. I'm actually reading the news off of the BBC website <laughs> about it. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, thanks the BBC for it, which I, it's actually kind of a cool thing about the BBC is that they are like government mandated to be completely without bias. So even mm-hmm. when it's in a situation where they're reporting on something that is maybe kind of bad news for them, they'll still report on it, which is, oh. is pretty cool. I did not know that. Yeah, it's it's because uh, it's paid for by UK taxpayers. Ah, so um, I believe anyway, I'm not 100 percent on that, but I, I believe that's how it works. Um, but as a result of that, it's like, no, you have to remain unbiased and you have to report. It's basically everything that Fox News isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's the exact opposite. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. Um, I think that it's so the Top Gear is a show that like it's like uh, it's like kitchen nightmares or bar rescue right it's like you know yeah. what it's saturday and i'm looking for some shitty fun tv like and top gear always delivered on that front oh yeah it's like oh they're doing a classic what's the what's the best that's the fastest classic car that very few people owned or something like ridiculous yeah, yeah or they'll do something crazy it's like okay you each have a hundred dollars you have to buy a car with this hundred dollars and drive across the sahara desert or something like that <laughs> and you're like yes i want to watch this and i want to see them breaking down and how they're dealing with it and oh, this is amazing uh, you can like watch those guys do anything that yeah. was the that was the 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 gist of the show and that's like where they where bbc lost out uh now i i don't know what happened that that caused i mean i i I guess somebody has an attitude problem and screams and yells at people jeremy clarkson punched someone in the face okay so (laughs) so yeah you you can't do that kind of stuff (laughs) you shouldn't do that uh and i don't condone that kind of behavior but you know what? Honestly, like if if it's a couple of dudes that are getting an argument and someone punches someone in the face, it's like, hey, sometimes someone's got to get punched in the face. Like <laughs> if I'm getting into an argument with somebody and he punches me in the face, that's an escalation of arguing with that person. You know, it's, it's also like, an HR violation. I'm just saying. Yes, yes, yes. And so that's that's the <laughs> difference, right? Is that it happened in the workplace. Yeah. <laughs> in which case it became an HR violation. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, it's this is. This is obviously this is great news uh, for people that are looking for just hey, I just want to feel like watching something trash. Yeah. 
Well, and especially since it's being picked up directly by a online streaming media service. Like, I, I'll i be honest, Amazon Prime wouldn't have been my first choice. I would have... I, I actually tweeted something along the lines of, Dear Netflix or Hulu, please pick them up or something a while back. Oh, and because I, of you. I debated adding Amazon in there, and then I would look totally awesome right now, but I decided not to. So thanks a lot, past me. Um, <laughs> but like it, 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 the problem that Amazon Prime has for me is that there isn't really much on it until it's, this show comes out. At it's, which point, it's got yeah, quite a. Few, I mean, I guess it depends on what you are gonna watch, but it doesn't have anything on it that isn't also on Netflix or Hulu. Oh, I beg to differ. That I would actually watch. There you go. There yeah. you go. That, that, it, that they, they do have a whole lot of really shitty TV on Amazon Prime. So does Netflix. And that's the yeah. best thing. Once you have all of them, the trifecta, the Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, you have all the shitty TV you could possibly ask for. This is true, except that I've watched every single episode of Storage Wars available <laughs> on Netflix. But dude, God and Gods and Guns. Come on, man. No, no. <laughs> I look at the the problem I have with Amazon Prime, okay, is that they have every single episode of Storage Wars ever, but they all cost like five dollars an episode, and I ain't paying five bucks an episode. Well, no, for hold on a second. Storage Wars. You said that, and I haven't read the article, but you said it's coming to Amazon Prime. Now, coming to Amazon Instant Video is different than going to Amazon Prime. Prime means it's free for people to have a Prime account. Oh, that's true. That that's true. Yeah. So, which one is it? It's Prime, yeah. Yes! So that's good! <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great, because it'll just, it's a, it's a, obviously it's just a, it's a feature for, uh, an add-on feature for uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah, at, at uh, the very least, this, so, um, I don't think anyone has officially said Amazon Prime. The BBC article says... Uh, the trio will front three series of a new motoring program for Amazon Prime with the first season to be made available worldwide in 2016. So the BBC says Amazon Prime, but that they, like, they may just be getting Amazon Prime and Amazon streaming video mixed up because a lot of people do that. Yeah, I, I could see that. Wow, that would be that would suck. I'm I, I could see Amazon buying these guys up and making it free for prime users just to just to bundle it in they'll sell more they'll make up money that way they have plenty of money as it is uh because everyone everyone i know has freaking prime like i can't tell you the last time i came across them wait do you have prime yeah okay <laughs> oh, yeah. you should have said no just for comedic purposes but <laughs> no but like i don't remember the last time i i talked to somebody who did not have prime um so it's, yeah, it's just another add-on to that. God, and it'd be free. That would be so amazing. Yeah, Sweet. Wired is also pro uh, promoting that it's on Prime. There you go. So Free, buddy. Jeremy well, Clarkson tweeted that Amazon Video UK was saying that he can't be their chief drone pilot. Apparently they want us to make a car show. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh. So cool. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that we could we could mention that Top Gear. Well, I'm glad we did. Yeah. Because now, now I'm very happy. It's a happy end of the show. It is a happy end of the show. It is a million degrees in my little office. I need it to... is for me, too. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> I... dripping sweat sitting here talking about Top Gear. And not just because I'm thinking about Richard Hammond. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in boxers and a tank top. Oh, I'm I'm wearing like real people clothes. Oh, you should take those off. I'm not gonna take my clothes off for you, Mike. You Stop should. asking. <laughs> 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 <laughs>